Good morning. This is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. South Dakotans' generosity is shining forth amid the darkness of tragedy. Wednesday's explosion in Fort Pier killed three family members, including a six-month-old girl. People have donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Hupp family. Many of them are total strangers, including Jackie Fitzer of Sioux Falls, who pledged $500 to a GoFundMe account. Maybe a cliche, but I think we're just a small community, the whole state. I mean, I think when something happens in our state, we all come together and we all help if we can. And I've noticed that time and time again. Volunteers with First Dakota National Bank, where homeowner Trevor Hupp works, have been clearing debris from the site of the explosion. Three construction workers were taken to the emergency room after a scaffolding collapsed in central Sioux Falls. According to a statement from Sanford Health, the collapse happened just after 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon next to Sanford's Children's Hospital at the location for a new orthopedic hospital. Sanford Health did not give information on the severity of the injuries or the status of the injured workers. The health system did, however, say in a statement that additional information would come out when it's available. The Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office needs your help in finding a man who is considered armed and dangerous. Here's a look at his picture. 30-year-old Kevin Bass is wanted for a drive-by shooting that sent a man to the hospital early Sunday morning in central Sioux Falls. Court documents say Bass was involved in a fight at a restaurant on Minnesota Avenue. When the other man walked off, Bass allegedly got in a car and shot him twice as he drove by. The victim was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Surveillance video helped authorities identify Bass as the alleged shooter. If Bass's name sounds familiar, that's because he has a long criminal history and has been in the news before. At the beginning of the school year, he got into a fight with a woman near Hayward Elementary School and allegedly fired a gun. Staff at the school sheltered in place and police used a drone to find him. In that case, he pleaded guilty to resisting arrest and served about a month in jail. All of the other charges against him, including assault, were dropped. And we have an update on a man who was found dead in a water drainage tunnel in Rapid City last weekend. Police identified the victim as 52-year-old Dwayne Yellowcloud, who was reported missing back in December. An autopsy says there was no evidence of traumatic injury. During the investigation, police found evidence that these tunnels were used as shelter by people who are homeless. Authorities believe Yellowcloud was using the tunnel as a shelter when he died. Investigators say his heavy clothing indicates he died during the winter. Recent heavy rains likely swept his body to the gated runoff tunnel where he was discovered. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Monk. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are following shower and thunderstorm chances western central South Dakota for today. We'll see what we can do as we get into next week for our rain chances across eastern Kettleland. So we'll have a dry day today across eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa. Temperatures in the 80s for afternoon highs. We do have our shower and thunderstorm chances western and central South Dakota. 70s and 80s will continue through Monday and beyond as we do take a look at our scattered rain, mainly in central and western South Dakota through the holiday weekend. More details on your Kettleland Live Doppler forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. AAA estimates more than 42 million Americans will be traveling this year during Memorial Day weekend. The unofficial start of summer will have around 3 million more travelers compared to last year. A couple of those travelers have made their way to Sioux Falls all the way from Virginia, and they enjoy South Dakota as well as reuniting with family. The weather is better in the summer, <laughs> but we just like the, you know, kind of pace of life out here and we try to visit as often as we can. The kids um, like to run around on the, the farm and, you know, see the animals. That's stuff that we don't get to do in Northern Virginia very often. AAA estimates that this year's Memorial Day weekend will be the third busiest since the organization started tracking holidays in 2000. Meanwhile, beaches and lakes will likely be popular locations this holiday weekend. If you're headed out on the water, make sure you're being safe. That means wearing a life jacket, watching out for other boaters, and keeping an eye on children. It's, it's a really nice weekend, and I, I think there's going to be a lot of people out. So, you know, just be aware of your surroundings and use common sense. And if you head out to Wall Lake, you can use the Life Jacket Loner Station if you don't have one. He's considered the greatest race car driver of all time, and Thursday, Mario Andretti made a pit stop in Brandon. 
He was brought in for the grand opening of Northwest Tires that sells Firestone Tires, a brand Andretti has trusted for more than 40 years. I, I've been with uh, the Firestone family, so to speak, uh, since 1964 officially, where uh, when I joined the top level of Indy cars, you know, champ cars and the team that I was with was part of the, the Firestone teams where there was a big war between Firestone and Goodyear, which was wonderful because that's when the competition really started in developing the modern tire as we know it. Andretti retired from racing in 1994, but he'll be watching the upcoming Indy 500 Sunday because he owns five cars in the race, including one driven by his grandson, Marco Andretti. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather update today, looking at warm temperatures, a lot of 80s uh, later today. Rain chances will stay few and far between. A couple of items here, maybe a, a remnant push of some moisture from Nebraska into western South Dakota early this afternoon. If that does result into a couple of showers, they'll be fairly isolated. There's a little more rain developing again into the northern Black Hills. You know, Spearfish ended up with some Thunderstorm activity yesterday, and likewise, we might see some more of that tonight, even into the rest of the Black Hills. There are some chances of rain there, but East River, not so much. We're going to stay dry, and that's how the weekend will begin. Any remnant rain chances for Pier tonight will be pretty minimal, too, but they at least are there. And then that cycle of stronger winds during the afternoon will likely go at least 20 to 35, maybe a few gusts near 40, central Ketherland tomorrow. And yet again, some areas of showers and thunderstorms in the west. I still think this is probably a little overdone on Futurecast, but at least it gives us a clue as to where some rain can pop up. The bottom line is this major block in the jet stream, this high pressure ridge over the Great Lakes, which in our case, since we're on the back side of that, we're on the warm sector of this push of air. It's going to continue uh, in some form or fashion here as we get into this forecast. You can see the repeat performance of scattered rains in the western high plains all the way from western Oklahoma into western South Dakota. And what happens here is that next week, the ridging to our east may begin to break up a little bit. And that's important because at any time that that happens, at least it opens the door to some rain chances to sneak into areas a little farther east. Uh, I would really say at this point, though, given the lack of jet stream energy, we're looking at probably some clusters of rain. Uh, and if you can get underneath some of those next week, that would be very beneficial because the eventuality is this ridge is probably going to reorganize across southern Canada. And that becomes kind of a battle zone here. You know, we do generate some rain on future cast. But, you know, when we kick this out down the road that many days, I just get a little bit more suspicious as to how much rain there is here in Ketherland. We'll just wait and see at this point. And day six and day seven is kind of where we're sitting on our chance of rain in Sioux Falls at 84 for high today, too. you got to remember the wind and the above average temperatures that accelerates the uh, moisture deficits. So these things kind of sneak up on us if we're not paying attention. We're here to kind of let you know all these things in the background we're watching. Look at all those 80s. You know, 86, 86, 86, they're just common. Uh, some folks in the north probably at times will be even warmer. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Aberdeen starts hitting 90 again at some point. But for now, if we can at least generate some 20 and 30 percent chances of rain, I think that's a, a starting point. Dew points look a little better next week. Uh, so that's also an aiding factor. For Pier and Rapid City, you are going to notice there are better chances of rain. So uh, for a time of year that's typically wetter in eastern Ketherland, the pattern is certainly flip-flopped. We've got western areas likely seeing at least some chances of showers and thunderstorms, and as a result, just a little cooler, highs around 80 most of the days coming up. Check out the latest details on this pattern. We've got some good information for you online at ketherland.com.